This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Tuesday, the 26th day of October in the year 2021. I'm Gordon Mosley. Here's what we're tracking tonight. Guyana's second oil production vessel, the Lazy Unity, sailed into Guyana's waters this morning and is now based in the Stabrook Block offshore Guyana. The vessel made a 53-day journey from Singapore to Guyana and it will now be prepared for testing and commissioning. Production manager at ExxonMobil Guyana, Mike Ryan, said the company is pleased with the arrival of the vessel, which will further boost Guyana's oil production. I'm so proud of this team, the resiliency of the Unity team. Um, the sail itself is long. Um, the challenges of COVID in the Singapore yard were, were challenges for sure, but the, but the team uh, was resilient, uh, pushed through and delivered you know, a beautiful FPSO that's here in Guyana now. And we're all, we're all really excited that she's joined the neighborhood next to Lisa Destiny. And uh, we're really looking forward to the next few phases as we bring this uh, FPSO online into 2022. According to Exxon, the Lisa Unity FPSO has been awarded a Sustain One notation by the American Bureau of Shipping, the Classification Society, for the unit. It is the world's first FPSO to achieve such recognition for sustainability for its design, documentation and operational procedures, the company said. So Unity is, um, is a, a new fabrication and design hull, so it's not a converted tanker. And again, all the top sides are new just like, like Destiny, but the top side's weight is 27,000 metric tons. So it's a, another 11,000 metric tons bigger. Um, the physical size of the floating structure is not that much bigger, but Unity is not shaped like a tanker. It's shaped like it's a little bit square on the sides and longer. And so it's a few meters wider, a few meters longer, but because of the design, we can put more equipment on the top sides. The ExxonMobil Guyana official noted that the development concept and work on the Lisa Unity FPSO have been guided by the company's enduring values. We're getting recognized for that. We're getting recognized now of an industry coming along with, with Unity. Um, and we're working extremely hard to continue to build on the success of safety, but also our environmental performance. We recognize the challenges that we had with Destiny Startup and the flash gas compressor. We are committed and working hard to be successful in the Unity startup. The flash gas compressor is a different design on Unity, um, and we have confidence in this equipment that we're going to be able to bring it up and meet our expectations. Exxon said the laser phase two development will produce up to 220,000 barrels of oil per day from the laser unity, which will be supported by a total of six drill centers and approximately 30 wells. Laser phase two is expected to cost $6 billion. More news coming up in just a moment. It's been a long time coming. Overdue, some might say, but now that it's here, it will change life forever, and it is here to stay. The future is now. Transforming Guyana into the 21st century. Introducing GTT Fiber. Experience internet connectivity like never before. Speeds you deserve at prices you can afford from a name you can trust. Sign up today. GTT Fiber is here. GTT. Together, we rise faster. It's one of your biggest goals, getting your own home. Where memories are made. Where happiness lives. You may feel that home ownership or renovation is beyond your reach. But we at Republic want you to know that there's always a way. Ask us about our suite of mortgages. Let's help make your housing wishes come true. Or advise on how the equity in your existing home can finance other dreams and goals. Call or go online to learn more. We've got exciting news! All 12 ounce yellow cap Buster are now only $100. Buster, live in Come full get color. your Buster, Buster $100. Mobile Delvac and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Sol Guyana Inc. Mobile Delvac and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Sol Guyana Inc. Let's 
Let GBTI make your dreams of owning a home a reality. Buy or build your home with us. Let us help you to completely outfit your home and make it move in ready. Need to purchase land? We finance that too. Benefit from our 10% down payment and interest rates as low as 4.25%. Calculated on the reducing balance with up to 30 years to repay. Switch your mortgage to us and learn about benefiting from the equity in your home. Invest wisely. Apply online or call your branch to schedule an appointment. GBTI, we see Guyana through your eyes. Welcome back. The Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly and Representative of the Joint the Parties in Parliament, Lennox Schumann, has made an appeal to President Irfan Ali, urging the President to meet with the opposition leader, Joe Harmon, to begin the process of the appointments of a substantive Chancellor, Chief Justice, Police Commissioner, and Chief of Staff of the Ghana Defence Force. The President has long said that he is only prepared to meet with the opposition leader if the opposition leader publicly recognizes the legitimacy of his government. But the Deputy Speaker, who met with the opposition leader last week, told the President in a letter that by Mr. Harmon's acceptance of the post of opposition leader, he has acknowledged the legitimacy of the government. But even so, Mr. Schumann told the President that his administration has been in office for over a year, and despite calls to make the substantive appointments, there has been no movement in that regard. Schumann also reminded the President that the Constitution mandates that the opposition leader plays an integral role in the judicial and other constitutional appointments. Article 1271 of the Constitution provides that a Chancellor and the Chief Justice shall each be appointed by the President after obtaining the agreement of the Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Schumann said a failure to fill the positions with substantive appointments means a continuance of the violation of the spirit and intent of the Constitution. The Deputy Speaker also urged the President to act as soon as possible to bring the matter of the appointments and the stalemate between the parties to an end. The opposition leader has said he is ready to begin the consultations for the appointments to move forward. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration met today on the Pfizer and BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine for children ages 5 to 11. The meeting will set the stage for the announcement of the vaccine rollout for children within that age category. And already here in Guyana, the government is in line to administer the Pfizer vaccine for children between the ages of 5 to 11 as early as next week. According to the health minister, Dr. Frank Anthony. Starting from next week. We are um, already examining the possibility of doing the vaccination for the 11 to 5 age group uh, because we are anticipating that the US FDA would approve the vaccine, Pfizer vaccine, for this age group as well. Guyana started administering the Pfizer vaccine to children back in August. And while there was a positive start, it has now slowed and less than 40% of the targeted group has received a first dose. Nevertheless, the Minister of Health said the Health Ministry will continue to work with the Education Ministry and parents about the issue. Our approach has been that once we go to a school, we open it up to the entire community. So anybody within that age group can come to the school that we are operating in and they can get vaccinated. And we have seen some of that. But in other cases, um, I think the people felt that only the people who are going to, the, to that school can come. And I think that has caused some confusion. So far, 26,966 children have received the first dose of the Pfizer vaccine, which represents 37% of the children between the ages of 12 to 18 years. 17,489 children have received both doses, making them fully vaccinated. That's about 24%. The minister said there is still a lot more work to be done, and he urged parents that they give permission for their children to be vaccinated again. COVID-19. Let's tell you now that Attorney General Anil Nandla and Attorney Douglas Mendez, who is representing the Vice President in the election petition appeal case, have both objected to more submissions being made to the court by the attorney for the petitioners, Roy Zilford. Senior Counsel Nandla and Mendez are both calling for the matter to be wrapped up sooner. Election petition 99 was thrown out by the Chief Justice earlier this year on the basis that a second name respondent, former President David Granger, was served the petition after the prescribed time for service had expired. The petitioners then decided to appeal that ruling. 
the Attorney General and Mr. Jagdeer's attorney have both been arguing that the Court of Appeal does not have jurisdiction to hear the matter. Mr. Nandlal has also argued the appeal should be struck out as there is no statutory or constitutional jurisdiction for the Court of Appeal to hear an election petition dismissed for procedural impropriety. Mr. Mendez believes that the appeal should also be dismissed and should not have been entertained by the court in the first place. He believes the full court also lacks jurisdiction. With those arguments, Attorney Royce Dill Ford, Senior Counsel, who is representing the petitioners, has asked to be allowed to make more submissions to the court in response to the arguments put forward by the two attorneys. However, both Nandlal and Mendez objected, indicating that it's time for the matter to be wrapped up. They believe that allowing Ford to make additional submissions could result in the other attorneys wanting to make submissions in response and that could further drag out the case. Mr. Ford, however, contends that the submissions will be in response to the arguments submitted by the two attorneys and nothing new. Chancellor Yonet Cummings granted Mr. Ford time to make his submissions and the attorneys have also been granted seven days to make their responses to Ford's submissions once those are filed. The Chancellor made it clear that matters that are not directly related to the previous arguments will not be entertained. The matter will now come up again on the 26th of November and at that time a date will be set for the final ruling in the case. A 39-year-old man is in the custody of the Customs Anti-Narcotics Unit after he was nabbed yesterday with more than 30 pounds of local and foreign marijuana in his car. Khan, who identified the suspect as Davindra Sukhtio of Republic Park, East Bank de Mararo. Khan, who said based on information it intercepted a motor car being driven by the man in the vicinity of Rahman's Park on the East Bank. A search of the car revealed the eight large parcels of marijuana. According to Kanu, the marijuana carries a street value of $4.7 million. Investigations are ongoing and charges are expected to be laid against the suspect before the end of this week. Three days after three men were arrested during a Kanu operation in Sofia, only one of them has been charged for narco-trafficking. 31-year-old Royland Adolf of Industrial Area Linden was charged with trafficking over 10 pounds of marijuana in the Sofia area here in Georgetown. Kanu said the marijuana carried a street value of $1.8 million. Adolf appeared before the chief magistrate today with his attorney Dexter Todd at his side and he entered a not guilty plea to the charges. He was granted bail in the sum of $250,000. Kanu reported last Friday that during an operation in D Fields of Fire, it conducted a search of a Toyota wagon that was parked in front of a shop. During the search, the agents found several large parcels of marijuana. Three men, including the one charged today were initially arrested mobile special and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Saul Guyana Inc mobile special and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Saul Guyana Inc it's one of your biggest goals getting your own home where memories are made where happiness lives you may feel that home ownership or renovation is beyond your reach, but we at Republic want you to know that there's always a way. Ask us about our suite of mortgages. Let's help make your housing wishes come true. Or advise on how the equity in your existing home can finance other dreams and goals. Call or go online to learn more. All 12 ounce yellow cap Buster are now only $100. Buster, live in Come full get color. your Buster, Buster $100. We are legions of men standing strong, but never too proud to stoop and help someone. We must send a clear signal to all. Do right. Walk in upright ways knowing that's what being a man is all about and ever aware that things will only get worse when good men do nothing stand strong be the one to live right it's been a long time coming overdue some might say but now that it's here it will change life forever and it is here to stay the future is now Transforming Guyana into the 21st century. Introducing GTT Fiber. Experience internet connectivity like never before. 
speeds you deserve at prices you can afford from a name you can trust. Sign up today. GTT Fiber is here. GTT. Together, we rise faster. Super 95 gasoline gives you more reasons to drive and is available at 56 service stations nationwide. For affordable price, high performance and high mileage, choose Guyol's Super 95 gasoline. Across the region tonight, Peru Socialist President Pedro Castillo has urged his Congress to draft a bill for the nationalization of Peru's natural gas sector, undoing previous statements in which he said he would not seek to nationalize parts of the economy. In remarks broadcast on government-owned TV Peru, Castillo said he wanted to draft a joint bill with Congress regarding the nationalization of the natural gas sector. He said it is necessary to give Peruvians what the people have produced. Castillo campaigned on a far-left platform that included the nationalization of the gas and mining sectors, but had said since taking office in July that he would keep industries in private hands and incentivize private investment. On the Peru's constitution, private companies can be nationalized only with congressional approval. Peru's Congress leans right, and it is unlikely that a majority coalition would support the nationalization of the gas sector. The lives of patients are at risk in Haiti due to fuel shortages across the country, which are affecting some of the country's major hospitals. Supplies have been disrupted for weeks because of lorry drivers are too scared to brave the roads controlled by gangs which engage in kidnappings for ransom. Roadblocks erected by protesters angry at the lack of security have further hampered deliveries. Media in Haiti said fresh protests and the strike were planned for this week. The international organization UNICEF said that due to the frequent power cuts, most hospitals in Haiti relied on fuel power generators to keep patients alive. The agency estimates that 300 children, 45 women and 150 COVID patients are at risk unless fuel is delivered by this evening. And finally tonight, international news. The U.S. government has outlined new rules for foreign travelers to the U.S. as flight restrictions lift for the first time since the pandemic began in 2020. The plan to reopen the U.S. border next month to foreign flights includes a requirement that almost all foreign visitors be vaccinated against COVID. The U.S. travel ban has grown to include dozens of countries, including the U.K., much of Europe, China and India. The travel industry has been asking for U.S. President Joe Biden to lift the ban. Originally imposed by Donald Trump, the ban on flights from most foreign countries was extended when Mr. Biden took power in January. The rule bans most visitors from Brazil, China, South Africa, the UK, 26 Schengen countries in Europe, Ireland, India and Iran. The proclamation signed by President Biden on Monday says the airlines will be required to check travelers' vaccination status before they can board departing planes. Airlines must confirm that the proof of vaccination comes from an official source and was received at least two weeks prior. Any vaccines approved by U.S. health regulators will be accepted. Unvaccinated travelers, including Americans, will have to show a negative COVID test taken within one day of departure. Children under the age of 18 will be exempt from the vaccination requirement, but must still provide a negative test taken within three days of travel. The new restrictions take effect on the 8th of November. And that's your News Source Evening Bulletin for tonight. I'm Gordon Mosley, reporting and encouraging you to stay safe.